Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part 4 for today, Friday, May 24th, 2013. I'm Darko and I'm ready to go. Syria resolute to fight terrorists and find political solutions, says Syria's Assad. So he stressed that um, his resolve to continue fighting terrorism while embracing a political solution to end the crisis, saying Syria is determined to tackle terrorism and uh, those who support it regionally and globally and to find a political solution to the crisis. His remarks came after Syrian troops achieved great victories against the insurgents in the western border town of Qasir. So hopefully you guys remember this article that I just covered, Syrian rebels in trouble. German intelligence sees Assad regaining hold. Not even a year ago, German intelligence predicted Syrian autocrat Assad's regime, regime would soon collapse. Now the agency instead believes the rebels are in trouble. Government troops are set to make significant advances, it predicts. Then I saw this article from today uh, from McClatchy. Israel in uh, reassessment thinks Syria's Bashar al-Assad will last a while. <laughs> Israel has reversed its assessment about the staying power of the Syrian president and now thinks he'll remain in control of at least part of this country for some time to come. A conclusion that makes it likely a growing number of officials think uh, that an escalation of violence between the two countries uh, may be inevitable. Israeli defense officials said that not only was the Syrian army outperforming expectations against the terrorists, but also that previous forecasts of Assad's fall depended on the belief that vast numbers of supporters would defect, a prediction that hasn't come to pass. So this is, a, they're going according to the Brookings Institute for Policy uh, for Regime Change. That's what they're going off, and they're not getting that. A million Israeli landmines planted in occupied Palestinian West Bank. About a million landmines have been planted by the Israeli occupation in occupied Palestinian West Bank. Official Palestinian data has shown. So the Commissioner General of the Palestinian Liberation Organization in Washington said the number of Israeli landmines planted is between 800,000 to a million. I believe the, that was one of the things uh, that Israel said recently was that one of their soldiers I was uh, killed doing a routine uh, landmine clearing operation. Militants, I don't know if that story was true, but that's what they said. I almost wonder if they're working alongside the rebels or something like that. Uh, militants in Syria received 35 tons Saudi arms cargo, says top commander. The top commander of foreign-backed militants fighting against the Syrian government says the militants have received a 35-ton armed shipment from Saudi Arabia. So they had uh, previously called on Washington to deliver 700 tons of arms to the terrorists every week over the next month. Uh, you know, just recently you had the UK, I believe France, and the United States all approved funding uh, for these terrorists. A cyber attack campaign for Syria. We've also heard about what possible assassinations by uh, Israel's Mossad. Last week, Syrians lost access to the Internet for the second time in a month. While the Assad uh, government claims the lapses were the result of faulty network link, the evidence suggests that they were deliberate efforts by the government to hamper the opposition's ability to communicate inside the country and with, outside, with the outside world. Remember that the um, Syrian Electronic Army actually sent something uh, to one of, uh, one of the main U.S. Uh, news sources, Financial Times or something, uh, basically showing them uh, uh, some footage from the rebel of what the rebel atrocities, what uh, what type of atrocities were taking place and being done by these quote rebels. Syria agrees in principle to attend Geneva II conference. Says Russia, says we need uh, we note with satisfaction that we have received an agreement in principle from Damascus to attend the international conference in the interest of Syrians themselves finding a political path to resolve the conflict. So. Some say the meeting will be held on June 10th, but uh, the Russian diplomat said such reports cannot be taken seriously since the ranks of the Syrian opposition groups remain so divided. Credibility at stake as Syrian rebels debate peace talks, says June talks most, uh, mostly opposed but not participating uh, carries a risk. Intense debate and ongoing uh, in the Syrian national coalition over whether or not to participate in the upcoming Geneva II conference aimed at ending uh, this uh, this uh, war. So it goes on here and it says that the rebel Syrian National uh, Coalition has not decided on the matter despite UN Special Envoy Bra Brahimi already claiming that they would attend. They said it's a difficult matter for the council as it tries to find a position that allows him to resist ending the war without looking like they are doing so. 
So leaders in the council uh, debate are openly condemning the talks, warning it would amount to surrender to attend without setting their usual preconditions, uh, of course, unconditionally ousting the current government. So it goes on here and it says that, yet the Syrian National Council has limited support among the actual rebel fighters to begin with, and they might lose what support they have if they agree to end the war at a time when Islamist rebels are determined to conquer not only Syria but the entire region. Then we have this from Klatchy. Despite word of split over al-Qaeda, Nasra front, still key in Syria fighting. Then it goes on there and talks about how basically um, they had joined, uh, joined forces, right? The group's allegiance to al-Qaeda. And um, so in this article, they actually say how al-Qaeda is a key it's key in this operation, this terrorist operation, and they support it. Syrian civil war turns proxy war with military mobilization. It says as Russia's warships, weapons, systems, and arms continue to flow into Syria, Israel is not about to let Russia, Hezbollah, and Iran tip the balance of power in favor of its border enemy. It says Israel is one of the key players in the region that is tempted to remain quiet and let NATO handle much of the Syrian civil war from Turkey without getting publicly uh, publicity themselves, well, that's what they're known for, right? Using other people to do their dirty work for them, hiding, uh, you know, behind the scenes. It says, because of this, it's been primar uh, primarily been concerned with a defensive posture so far and the prevention of the uh, terms restricting arms shipments to Hezbollah. But it says it's changing as Russia steams its way over with greater force and U.S. fails to play a counter-Syrian role. So it says, has Russia beaten the U.S. with a decisive direct military engagement? So you can go in there and check it out. It's a pretty good article. Uh, kind of breaks it down if uh, if you don't really pay attention to this stuff. Uh, we've gone over it uh, many a times, talking about um, allies and access powers. Uh, more killed in North Lebanon as Syria spillover grows. So just one last thing is, uh, yeah, yeah, you had um, Russia just sending those uh, missiles and stuff and talking about a permanent Mediterranean um, uh, naval presence. And, of course, Lebanon, uh, or Hezbollah, publicly um, saying that they're with them. The, you know, that's the thing, though. I'm just wondering. I don't know if this is completely accurate. It's just kind of theoretical. Um, is that, uh, you know, you heard uh, Nasrallah and uh, Hezbollah leaders saying, oh, yeah, you know, we're, uh, we're going we're gonna to start helping Syria over in, in Lebanon on the border. And maybe they are. Uh, but I'm almost wondering if it actually has nothing to do with organized Hezbollah. It has to do with just people that are uh, pro-Shiite, uh, Shia, uh, pro-Alawite, or pro-Assad, and um, they don't want Western imperialism uh, coming in, and they're just militias. But then you have Hezbollah saying that they're Hezbollah. And, of course, when you do that, um, what happens? Well, then all of a sudden they get tied to Iran. I mean, we're talking about proxies and proxy armies and controlled opposition, you know, like Hamas or Al-Qaeda. It just seems to me, you know, Hezbollah, they, they never got to Europe, EU and the U.S. never got them on the terrorist list. So it's like, it's almost as if they didn't want them to be. Uh, they could possibly uh, be controlled, believe it or not, by Israel to basically use them as a proxy force, uh, to, like as a buffer force between Israel and Syria. Of course, you know, the U.S., the West, Israel they're provoking, they're carrying out all these operations right on their doorstep, um, but they you know, they can't handle it all on their own. So, like, again, like I said, they have to use other forces. I was just watching a video about this, uh, Iraq and how it was under Saddam and that and what's going on and uh, with the 80-88 war with Iran. And the Iraqi woman was saying that, um, that you know, of course, all the people that are there now, al-Maliki, or and all the administration, they're basically the, the remnants of the looters that initially were there, along with the U.S. and all that, that helped loot Iraq, uh, just cash, money, all that. But that in Iran, she was saying, this is something that, you know, you, you always hear in truth and alternative news and that is that, you know, the CIA overthrew um, the Ayatollah and installed it. Uh, she's saying that actually the Ayatollah and the, and the religious clerics um, are actually there because they're allowed to be there by the West, by intelligence agencies. She said that uh, the whole war could have been avoided uh, had they not uh, brought about the, quote, Iranian revolution. So that's pretty big, uh, pretty big claims to make that she was making, um, but basically saying that the whole uh, uh, revolution was actually Western-induced.
And I've always wondered that too. It just makes it's just hard to see things that are quote revolutions that happen, and then that people actually have their own quote Islamic Republic, their own government, and everything set up, and and that, and that it was grassroots. I just find it hard to believe. Like I said, having a group like Hezbollah or Hamas or just whatever, it doesn't seem like anything's grassroots. It, all it's all from the top down. It also kind of makes sense too as to why the more uh, or the less hardliner uh, Ahmadinejad was kind of having a lot of trouble. Uh, recently, from this, it was interesting because from her perspective, she was basically saying the whole Iran-Iraq war was basically Western-induced. It was brought out by the West. It was to bring down Iraq. Uh, she was talking, going into Kuwait, about how what was going on with that, how they were provoking them. That Kuwait used to be part of Iraq, and that they were the the West uh, was doing that to provoke them. They wanted to obliterate everything that they had built. As far as a national government, uh, all the services that they had in Iraq uh, under Saddam, and mostly the peace, that they were able to have peace between all the different sects. So, more killed in North Lebanon as Syria spillover grows. 18 killed, 200 wounded since Sunday. Machine gun fire remains near Constantin and Tripoli, the major coastal city in northern Lebanon, where sectarian violence has spilled over from the neighboring Syria into the battle uh, between two neighborhoods. Fighters from the Sunni-dominated neighborhood continue to clash with fighters in the mostly Alawite uh, neighborhood. They started trading mortar fire as well. It says the Lebanon army has been deployed to the city but seems unable to stop the fighting. Obama and Bush, Blair, must be put on trial at the International uh, Criminal Court, says Noam Chomsky. So Bush and Blair ought to be up there at the ICC. There's no recent crime worse than the invasion of Iraq. Obama's got to be there for uh, the terror war. The European Union approves sending border security advisors. The EU approves a mission to help Libya improve its border security. Marines on alert if U.S. personnel evacuate Libya. This is from the 12th of May, a little bit older. Just thought I'd throw it in there, but this is new. New Benghazi whistleblowers. Stevens was involved in buyback of Stinger missiles from Al-Qaeda. So I said that uh, they were just basically arming these people that killed them. So, so more whistleblowers are coming forward, according to the diplomats. So his mission was to buy back Stinger missiles from Al-Qaeda groups issued to them by the State Department, not by the CIA. So it'd usually be a CIA effort, but the intelligence agency had opposed the idea because of the high risk involved in arming insurgents. And I've been talking about uh, recently using the phrase re uh, separating people from the resources. That's what the, you know, 10 years of Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, death and destruction is all about. So they can, so they can separate the people from their resources and they can divvy up contracts. So resource rich countries cannot manage their wealth. That's right. Only 11 out of 58 countries rich in natural resources can effectively manage their wealth. So better go in there like in Somalia, right? Amazonian ambition, Rosneft, signs another joint venture with Venezuela. So the world's largest publicly traded oil company is expanding its influence in Venezuela via a subsidiary of the National Oil Company. So the two companies signed a joint venture agreement to develop a river basin in Venezuela. So Rosneft's uh, shares will be at 40%, the remaining 60% will be owned by the, basically, uh, the uh, Venezuelan national company. Mali rebels bombed French uranium mine in Niger and killed uh, 26 Niger soldiers captured in secondary attack. said here that they attacked two sites in Niger today, including a French-operated uranium mine near Arlet and a Niger army military camp. I believe the EU just uh, approved troops for Mali. Bolivia lets President Morales run for re-election. Bolivia's Congress has passed the bill allowing President Evo Morales to run for a third term after the country's highest court had earlier approved the measure. Morales is the country's first indigenous leader, said he is not sure of whether he'll stand for re-election. However, he has strong support among the poor and the indigenous population. So these are one of the people that you would want as far as separating uh, the people from the resources. It's the type of person that you would want uh, to represent you to avoid that. Pakistan's military and incoming prime minister agreed to stop the U.S. drones. Says with the old regime gone, Obama's promise to limit his drone program in a speech today sounds less like a policy decision and more like a recognition of the reality of the situation. 
Obama says drone use is legal and effective and just. Imagine referring to Al-Qaeda, the same ones that they're funding. We are at war with an organization that right now would kill as many Americans as they could if we not stop them for New precedent is being set. Armed domestic drone strikes will soon be a reality. Check it out. Chechen, da Chechen dad slams FBI over death of son who feared he would be set up by the feds. Can't make it up. Two FBI agents involved in killing Zarniov arrest have been killed during a training exercise. And DHS says selling counterfeit goods is now terrorism.